I don't know what I'm doing. Meowdy, Mir here, aka Wham. I'm here and ready to get back into the groove of things. <laughs> Meowdy, Mir here, aka Wham Cannabis. I'm here and ready to get back into the groove of things. I'm here to discuss furry conventions with all y'all. The essentials and, well, how to act various conventions, and my individual experiences at specific conventions. And... How you do not need a fursuit to attend a furry con, or be a furry in general. Let's get to it. Whether you're a minor or an adult, anyone is welcome to furry conventions. However, please be advised parents to keep your children in your vision for their safety and others' safety. You should do that anyways with your kids, but be mindful that kids are going to be super excited around fursuiters. Trust me. Especially if you have a toddler who's still understanding this big ball we live on. However, preteens teens are usually okay, but still parents, do what you do best and just have a fun time with your kids. Don't feel like you're forced to go. It can be an enjoyable experience for you too. Anyways, furry conventions, like any convention, have vendors. You can buy physical items or even commission art. I know at Anthrocon, they have almost 80 people, I believe, vending each year. It's probably more than that now. I made this script back in 2021. With COVID restrictions lifted or heavily laxed, some of us are coming out more and more. So do not be surprised if this video makes you want to go to a con, which you should. Hotels. Now, usually these events are taking place at hotels. For example, Anthrocon is held at David L. Lawrence Convention Center. They've been held there every year. I personally went there, but I got sick with con crud, where I was so sick to my stomach to the point where I couldn't even attend the rest of the convention day, let alone the rave and stuff that happened that night. However, I did partial during the fursuit parade. Unfortunately, this is when I was had Milkshake 1.0, and she was a huge mess at the time. Though, her feet paws have been replaced, hand paws are pretty much done. I'm gonna be redoing it. And the head was refurbished. Warning, it does get hot in Pennsylvania, which is where Anthrocon takes place. So drink plenty of water. Gatorade too. Not to mention, follow the rule of 621, especially when fursuiting. E621 is essentially sleep six hours at least, eat two meals per day, at least, and take a shower at least once a day after fursuiting. If I can smell you across the con floor, that is a problem. If you didn't shower, at least, at least wear deodorant. Do not wear fursuit spray. It does not mask it. With hotels, you may not land the main hotel as a room because, like MFF, they have a lottery ticket system. This means you're randomly chosen if you can get one or not in the main hotel. I have never attended MFF myself, but I have heard many, many good and fun times from the con. With furry cons comes raves. That's right, raves, like I mentioned before. After 10 p.m., the lights dim, the music be pumping, most of it, if all, all not, furry conventions hold what is basically called a rave, like I said. Where furries go to the dance and have a good time. Mind you, though, if you have issues with certain noises or lights, I do recommend avoiding the dancing inside the rave. But you can dance outside the rave room or wear earplugs. That's what I did at Furry Week in Atlanta. It was a really good con. 
Avengers. Ah, uh, the lining of tables full of fursuit parts, fursuit materials, some pins, stickers, or any furry related thing up for sale. These are vendors who are advising their business and making ends meet while also ad advertising for the con and charity event. These people are, in my opinion, the heart of the con's advertisements. I remember going to Furpocalypse with $200 of free cash, only to have $2 left after just one day. Try not to spend everything on the first day. Don't make my mistake. Seriously, y you might see something else you want and wish, dang, I wish I didn't spend all of my money on stickers. Mm. Also, if you're that piece of mm -mm, scum who steals off of vendors' tables, go to hell. Like, seriously. Not okay. Some vendors run their business as a full-time job. Fursuiters, rule of thumb. If you're someone else's fursuiting, please have a handler. You or the other individual's vision is obscured and have common sense and situational awareness, by the way. Sometimes fursuiters have long tails. Do not step on them. Please look out for it. I understand accents are usually okay, but sometimes eh, you could get your tail ripped off if you know what I mean. <laughs> and not to mention stains can't get out of fur very easily. Please watch and then walk. This can be a bit difficult when, let's say, you're walking with friends, or have food, or hurrying somewhere. Again, just be aware of your surroundings around these fluffy people. Headless Lounge. Ah, the wonderful place called the Headless Lounge. A place where fursuiters, sometimes with handlers, come to behead and relax. They take a break with fans, sip the cold beverages of water, and possibly depict their life choices of them basically wearing a fuck carpet in 80 degree weather and the humidity is high without getting paid. Uh... Anyways, this room is specifically made for fursuiters and just general furries who need to cool off with the fans. The con also has water fountains for guests to rehydrate and sometimes free stickers, but oh, before I forget, please do not take pictures or videos here because many fursuiters and furries hate the picture taken, uh, especially by strangers when they're out of suit. Yeah. I know I do when I don't have my fursuit on. Speaking of the don'ts, that reminds me. I shall now transition into the segment of this video to the do's and don'ts of a furry convention. Let's get to it. Do's. One, ask for a photo by waving or just saying aloud to a fursuiter, can I have a picture taken? Don't be upset though if they say no because usually that just means they are overheated and need to de-sue. Two, follow the golden rule. You know it. You were taught it. I know you were. Rule three, go to panels. They can be a lot of fun. Four, pace yourself. If you have issues with PTSD, anxiety, and general medical problems, just be calm. Don't overexert yourself. And don't, and this is just a simple rule, don't be a dick. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and if I didn't mention anything else that you think should have been added into the video, please comment below. Reminder, be the best you can be, even if it's not today, try again tomorrow. Bye! Meowdy, Mir here, aka Wham! Oh shit, I kinda make it sound natural as crap and I'm like depressed. <laughs>